words. Thanks for the members of the Bar Association to be here on this webinar. Uh, the topic perhaps is a matter of some intrigue. What do the association, what does the Bar Association, in particular the Tax Bar Association, have to do with the negotiation? What do we negotiate? There are nothing extraordinary about uh, negotiating for something to secure the benefit only. This is perhaps a new expression. When I was uh, suggesting a topic for uh, Satish, and I said uh, the art of negotiation, I was mindful of the expression that art, whenever one use, use the expression art, unlike science, it does not give itself to a clear same answer from everyone. Einstein or I, if I were to be asking one plus one, it ought to be two. There can't be two things. That is science. But when it is art, you probably uh, understand Picasso's art very well. I may not at all. So therefore, the beholder, the person who sees something, experiences something, it could be purely subjective. When we, when we are talking about, therefore, the art of negotiation, I'm talking about uh, a practice uh, which has come to occupy a large field now. Business people uh, think uh, negotiation holds the key for many of uh, important decisions. It is just not that uh, this is my way of saying you'll have to accept it. It doesn't work like that. Therefore, uh, that negotiation must be brought within the field of uh, law could be some surprise to some of you. Uh, but the truth is that the Harvard School of Law has a program called as the Program on Negotiation, which is the most popular program. You have great speakers, they have great authors participating there. And there is a steady stream of persons who go and get trained. They're all in schools of law. The idea is that in any area of conflict where two persons have differing views, one has a demand, another uh, doesn't accept. Or he has another mutual demand which is uh, to be accommodated in some way. How do we accommodate? So when I'm introducing this topic, I'm also aware that all of us are not new to negotiation in any sense. So therefore, I was not even saying that this is the learning negotiation, the art of negotiation. I only said developing the skills of negotiation. The idea is, therefore, we all have some skills. So therefore, how do we understand? How do we develop it? So I'll go through, I'll share some screen. I'll put, uh, put them through screen. And I hope by the end of it, maybe about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes, when I close, uh, we should have something to talk about. We should have some questions, uh, which I can probably field and find out if I know what we can. But just go ahead and see. What, uh, how we understand this subject, how we can put that in practice in our place where we are. So there you go. I'm now going to be sharing some yeah, screen. Just a minute. And then you have that from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. That from the current slide. From the beginning. You have it. Just a minute. Everything takes its time. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, uh, you have the art of negotiation. I said developing new skills. The new skills are what we're talking about. Is uh, therefore how we will put that in practice. I would uh, see that the outline uh, brings out like this. I would put my uh, presentation in four segments. And the first segment is uh, how we negotiate all the time in our lives, uh, from from being young to where we are. Um, how do we encounter negotiations right from morning through evening? When do we fail? When do we succeed? How do we see that? Then applying these skills of what we have probably been experiencing, what we are putting there, there are some approaches to it. Management experts are now looking at it in terms of some clear ideas about how they can be put in practice. Therefore, therefore applying these skills of negotiation now, the, how do we apply them in transactions with others? 
Uh, how do we negotiate as lawyers for clients? And that's what we are the essential concern when I'm talking about negotiation for the bar association, the revenue bar association. I'm very clear in my mind as to how we can really orient ourselves to these new skills in our field of practice. That is what is relevant. How do we negotiate our safe passage in court? Again, very important. Uh, when we are talking about negotiation in court, when we are there encountering a judge, who is either a difficult judge, who, is, uh, who has read his paper, who has not read his paper. We have all kinds of things. I'm sure I'm not making any contempt of court there. I'm only making a, 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 a reality. But not at all times do we find the same kind of preparation of what you have. You understand your case better. You have done. It is just your case. But a judge is one of several cases for you. It is the one case which you have gone prepared. And you find yourself stonewalled against a judge who doesn't want you to entertain that argument which you are now coming fully prepared with. So how do we encounter situations like that? I would still see that to be a part of negotiation of how we can do that. Then I was saying in our outline, we'll also in the outline which I'm giving, I'm not merely talking about the practice as we see in courts, outside courts, in the manner we engage our conversations with our client, our client vis-a-vis -vis the other client on the other side or the other lawyer on the other side. Days are different. Probably times when you arrived in court, not uh, minding to know who is the other side or when is the other side, you would have prepared well or not prepared. You, you have your own set of preparations. You simply arrive there in court. You don't see what he is going to be saying. We just mind our own business. Now I'm going to be telling you something different now. In uh, ordinary situations, when there is a tough bargain on the other side, uh, how do we say no becomes an important thing. And that I don't accept what you're saying is, uh, is a big deal. And again, how do we say yes? This ultimately is uh, a manner of getting yes from the other side. There are famous authors, Yuri, for instance, uh, an Oxford, uh, a Harvard professor uh, whose uh, book became true dictionary for people who were in the art of negotiation for them to know. How do you make the other person say yes, that concludes the situation. So therefore, uh, that again, how do we do that? How do we proceed to that stage is how we'll see. So that's right. This is what, uh, this is how I think we'll approach this topic. Um, now, negotiation, uh, one uh, a famous author by name Collins uh, puts it in seven ways. There are seven steps which he says. Now, first of all, we need to understand what is the negotiation method which you are going to adopt. What is the negotiation method? We'll go into a slight, slightly longer, larger detail there. Uh, preparing a strategy is, again, a very important thing. Negotiation, you never say, no, I'm not prepared today. Let me see what he has to say. Um, just open a topic to see what he has to say. That is not the way we ever open a negotiation. You need to be more prepared better prepared than you would probably be when you are approaching the court with all your notes for your arguments. When we're talking about negotiation, we understand the situation where you know every bit of your case, just not every bit of your case, you're anticipating what could be the other side saying, what is the other side going to say which can shock me? What is it that I'm going to give to them which can be not easily avoided or they may not be able to say no to that? What is that? enticement value of what I have to propose. That is something, preparing a strategy. Always never arrive there in any place without knowing what you're going to be doing. And control in the earlier stages. Uh, just one, uh, one thought comes to my mind immediately. A long time back when I was still a lawyer and I moved from my office area uh, to Chennai. And in a case in the first court, uh, Somia Ji, I'm taking some name. So therefore, there is nothing wrong I'm saying and therefore I'm uh, obliged to those things who said something interesting. So therefore, it was about a case. And then as I was beginning to, I was a respondent to this, I was just looking around the paper. There was a petitioner counsel who was looking for papers also. He was, when the case was called, he had some difficulty in starting. So he immediately offered to say uh, and move on, present the case for a judge. The, the judges were prepared to accommodate me because the other side was still not fully prepared to make a beginning and therefore he started. So after this was over, just a few minutes, the other side took over. Then when I sat, Swamiyaji said, you know, it's such an important thing to make a beginning. You never should lose the chance. And to create the impression first makes a lot of difference. I realized when I moved from 
bar to the bench. Uh, but somebody who starts and lets me know in a capsule uh, what he's going to be saying. Uh, what is this case about? Uh, in a minute's time, again, you, I have a friend, Justice Mida. Uh, he has a manner of, uh, he's in Delhi High Court, he has a manner of uh, getting the lawyer started in a way. He will say, just tell me your case in two minutes. That's all. That's the case which you will have to, therefore, if you have a 700 pages, a thousand page compilation, you should be in a position to say in two minutes what your case is about. Then you'll go slowly. He'll probably give you a long time. He'll let you speak for a few days. But then to take control in the early stages when we're talking about how do we begin, how do we take control of the situations is an important way uh, of understanding negotiation, how to go. And then we at all times go with a purpose. At the time when I'm talking about negotiation, at the time when I'm pitching my demand, I know uh, what, is, what is it that I'm driving at. And to that extent, therefore, I know that there is uh, a bargain when the other person is not going to immediately accept it. If I know for certain uh, what I'm asking, he is going to be accepting immediately. There is hardly anything. Why is there litigation? Where is a conflict? We understand a conflict arises when there are unmatching demands from one to another. And therefore, we are looking at situations where the other side may have something. How do I bargain with a person who has a different who has a different take on what my demand is? And then ultimately, I secure an agreement and when we close in things. In this, in a kind of an agreement, we should must sustain itself. We always look for a win-win window. Uh, probably this is some other expression which we keep hearing whenever somebody talks about mediation is like, so it's a win-win situation uh, is there anything like that you must be wondering uh, there is a, a strong case i must win where is the question of making the other person win it doesn't work like that what is this what kind of a conflict it is where i allow for another person also to take a, a, a slice of cake may not seem correct is what you think but then the win-win situation of what i'm talking about is when the other side feels at least some comfort Look at a typical situation in a court emerging against the state for the revenue bar association. In many cases, you could be um, pitched against the state as the state has a demand, then you have something. What do you expect the state to accept? Yes, I don't, uh, you know, I accept your contention. The demand which were made is wrong and therefore we lose. And how will I be able to give that win-win feeling for a state is what you could be thinking. Now, the still point is that we have met all the points we have understood what we are saying uh, and uh, we are able to make him understand what we are saying. This is the legal position. Do we see this like that? Or do we have any other example in, in the past where a similar situation has been addressed differently? Or does it require a new situation where we need to be pushing the frontiers further and then securing a new dimension to the case so that the state even understands, oh, there is another way of looking at it. Probably next time the demand cannot be sustained. I understand. Let us see where it, which way it goes, which way the uh, judge takes. So it could still be possible even for the state to understand your point of view and then convince the department. I think this is correct. Let's not go further. This is fine. The case is over. So, uh, it's possible even for a state to relent from the hard decisions that they take. If they understand um, how we approach the point and then package it and say in a way that even the other side feels correct, that is comfortable. And then we, we know at all times uh, dealing with the, the difficult moments, it could be situations where uh, the person is a difficult person. He keeps on talking. He doesn't let you talk anything. He doesn't let you say anything. Or he comes with a very clear uh, or uh, not even clear, he comes with a kind of a position which is not prepared to alter. So therefore, difficult people could be people who could be very difficult in uh, making your point of view understood by the other person. Or you have uh, a person who is not willing to alter any situation. Those are the kind of people who will meet. And how to meet them? How do we go with them? How do we succeed in situations and we close the deal i already referred to an agreement while closing the deal what are we seeing how do we ensure that a system is closed in a way uh, which is comfortable and what are the checkpoints uh, which you will see towards the end to know how it should be done 
So therefore, these are the seven steps which Collins, uh, a famous author, seven steps to negotiation. This is a small book running to just about 120 pages. It's not even costly. It gives you the basic skills of what, what goes on, what are the various stages in a negotiation. Uh, how to understand. I thought I said understanding negotiation methods is in some way important. Therefore, we'll go with some kind of an understanding for that. Negotiation method, uh, there are, uh, it is stated there are five methods of surely succeeding in the way we say. Uh, we must believe that in a negotiation, we invest in relationships and not damage them. Uh, by the way we present our case, uh, we want to ensure that there is a sound relationship that continues. That is a, a type of situation where we know we are negotiating for something. We don't want to break relationships. We don't want to create a situation where there could be bad blood, uh, bad blood uh, flowing. We don't feel comfortable in the other persons even at, uh, after the case is over, after the litigation is over. Now, where investment in a relationship is material, uh, we, we think negotiation, that's the way we'll succeed. And then um, you must know that what you're trying to do is nothing extraordinary, nothing very new. You have at all times known how we do that. What do we, how do we negotiate in various situations in life? We'll soon come to that. But then we need to know that we frequently negotiate in our lives. And therefore, this is just one taking a leaf out of that experience and then applying it to business deals or when we are not talking about business here or not, we are not talking to businessmen, we are all lawyers, most of us. Uh, and therefore, how are uh, we seeing this? Uh, how do we see that there is a scope for negotiation? The most important thing is, uh, we say, I already started with saying, we don't talk about negotiation in a state of ill preparedness. I'm not prepared today, let us see what the other side says. No, it is not like that. The same way, uh, when we are talking about negotiation, I don't have time let us uh, to do the whole argument and uh, things and therefore let us negotiate. Let's see what the other side has to say. No. On the other hand, you need to set apart time for negotiation the same way as you probably talk about negotiation, uh, uh, talk about uh, arguments in court, the kind of preparation, the kind of time. Imagine for a normal lifespan of a case, you'll know that uh, the case proceeds for a few years or probably several hearings. You talk about half an hour, 45 minutes. You count the number of hours that you spend um, for any one case which you're having. It is not perhaps just half an hour the exit from the time you prepare for the case to go and wait in the court to the time that you set apart for that, you hear the other side, the judge taking time. All the time you try to simply put them and collapse them in a small capsule and see how much time you're spending when you're talking about negotiation, you're not going to be spending that much time, but surely you must be prepared to invest time. And that is very important. And then um, you must at all times know that uh, there is uh, the other side which is looking at something. There is something which they look from you. And what am I going to give? In a negotiation strategy, it never helps to say, this is my way, this is my demand, and this is what it is. It happened before uh, me some time back. There was a case which was, uh, I'm not taking names here because uh, it's confidential, but I'll just let you know how things happen sometimes. Um, this was a case referred by the Supreme Court. There were 14 cases before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, therefore referred the case to me and I was calling both sides to be present before me. And in this, when I had the narration of uh, the case proceeding from one party first, it was about some company, there are two companies uh, fighting. And when it came to the other side, the other side began like this. I have, we have 14 cases before, uh, before the Supreme Court, one against the other at various stages of suits. And uh, one uh, against an order in uh, the, the high court in some matter where there is an interim uh, order which was passed in a suit which has come. All the 14 cases must be decided in my favor. And what price they want out of it is what I'm interested in talking. So I was trying to say, you know, one doesn't set out uh, a demand and say this far and no further. If you're going to be saying now, I want the whole cake, Tell me what is the cost of the cake. 
when you are fighting for a cake, when you are saying now how much each one of us can share, and if somebody must begin with saying that I will have the whole thing, tell me what's your price. Uh, that is never the way it can work. Then it's such a poor preparation. That's what it means. A person doesn't understand that it is uh, never a situation that you arrive at a place saying that I want everything. Now, what is it that uh, you should do? Doesn't work like that. You should at all times think in your mind. I'm expecting something big out of you. What am I going to give out of this? So you should probably think at the time when you're preparing what I have to offer to the other side. Is there something which I need to offer? Be it an agreement, be it a tax issue, or what you need to be paying. What is the kind of a quid pro quo that we are talking about? What am I prepared to give is an important thing. You should always have that in mind. Without it, it doesn't go. And then when you're arriving in place with so much of social media uh, where persons say something, you need to know who the other side is. Probably uh, when we're talking about only the government, uh, even there, uh, who is that officer who is appearing? Who, are, uh, who, is, uh, who is briefing the other side? Uh, what, is, uh, what are his uh, uh, interests? Um, what is the interest? Uh, uh, how does he promote his own image in public? All that is worthwhile knowing. It may seem uh, unusual. Uh, why am I interested in knowing some officer somewhere? Uh, why, why am I interested in seeing what, how does he post? What are his posts in pub public media? It could be interesting. You never know. For uh, there could be something which you may suggest at the time of argument or at the time of negotiation, which can capture his imagination. So therefore, to if there is, uh, if you are yourself connected to mm, social media. Uh, look for some information, whether there is something available there in Facebook or LinkedIn or any of those things. Just picking up some information about the other side is uh, the way to go. It may not, I was merely giving you an example of social media. There can be so many other things, some communications of some orders which he had passed or some departmental proceedings in which he has been associated. If he's not a government on another side, what, what is it that we need to know about the other company? What is the profile of that company? Uh, what are they engaged in? What are the clients like? All kind of information relating to the other side is a sure way of understanding. These, uh, they uh, say, is when we are talking about uh, understanding the negotiation methods. These are certainly that the way you succeed. You need to have this. What are the five uh, ways to fail? Um, five ways to fail is to fix a, uh, a negotiated position. I won't uh, given. Like I said already, the example which I gave to you. Uh, I I will use the same methods which have worked for me before. Therefore, I'll employ the same thing, same skills, same kind of approach which I'll have. I told you that about uh, science and art, while science has only one answer, arts, it's not like that. It's crafted in some way to each one of particular method, to each situation, you look at it differently. So what appeals to me does not appeal to you. There's one person who may have bought some kind of an approach from me in the way I progressed. It worked for me. With another, it may not. So therefore, you need to know that there are previous methods which will work the same way here also. You should have a second line, third line, like that. And then um, I will simply arrive there without uh, any planning. It's never like that. You don't arrive there without any planning. You need to have a clear strategy. You need to uh, plan for that. It's waste of time. Planning is never the way. And uh, it's never build relationships before negotiations. This is again important. This is something it can work in the court. It can work outside the court. Picking up a phone or sending an email, all that is fine. You are not influencing or trying to do something which is improper. These are not even probably things which were done before. In a typical adversarial posturing where you have two different methods uh, and uh, you think what all the other side has uh, said is wrong. Uh, it's all a situation of a binary relationship of what is right and wrong, what is correct and incorrect. It's not like that. Whenever we are talking about a negotiation, we are trying to see, not assign any blame anywhere, not assign the rightness or the wrongness uh, somewhere. We are prepared to see how it can uh, work differently. So therefore, uh, to have some uh, manner of understanding, opening a conversation, I'm talking typically from a lawyer's point of view. If you have a case and there is a case is uh, being, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, 
posted a few days later, you meet the other lawyer who is uh, pitched on the other side. Uh, you just don't say, well, is there an enemy walking? It doesn't need to be like that. Uh, there can be ideal situation. This is a case which, which we are going to be fighting next week. You know something, you have some instructions on this. Uh, shall we discuss? Open an argument like that. Open a situation like that. Uh, shall we discuss about it? Uh, opening, opening up to see whether he has other side or something to say. Uh, or uh, what time do you think it will work for us? Make some talk, some friendly opening. Uh, that is essential. Uh, even with another lawyer for a case uh, to do things. Probably we are never used to doing that kind of a thing. Uh, you always see the other lawyer as a person who will at all times avoid. Uh, but uh, now I'm saying you understand through COVID uh, the preciousness of relationships, how we are longing for a kind of contact. We, in our own uh, lockdown period of where you get the completely confined within the house, uh, we try to connect in so many ways. Imagine a life without all these internet and connectivity issues. Uh, we would be completely lost. Now, it is at least showing to you the importance of building relationships. We have suddenly realized, uh, like we have never realized before, at least therefore we are getting sensitized to a new approach to life. So therefore look at that and never, uh, never build relationship before negotiations is the wrong thing to do. And there is nothing wrong uh, opening up uh, some channel of communication, it's always worth. Uh, and then if we are a few persons there uh, in our own office to assign roles within uh, our office, to make somebody prepare some case law, come to you with that, somebody who's good at pleading to have a look at that, assign several roles. Don't say this is not for you. So let everyone who wants to join in there in your office, uh, try and see who is good at what. So assign to each one some role, uh, secure a greater participation about the case. That's the way you will do assigning roles, team roles. It can work in court situations or without reference to any court, even when you're presenting yourself as an organization somewhere, when you're having a negotiation with another organization, even that can work. So therefore, uh, these are uh, uh, some methods of what you need to remember. Uh, there is, uh, in our daily lives, I said, uh, uh, how our life goes on in, in our daily lives. It's because it's important that we are not getting a, a new skill acquired. It's something which we are already used to. Uh, imagine I'm, I'm taking this only because uh, of negotiation. When does it start for the family? Somebody, the, the wife says, uh, let's go to a movie. You say, no, it's not possible today. Or if the kid wants something or your son or a daughter who is in college wants uh, something and uh, you say, now this is not today, this is not uh, done. Uh, you shouldn't be going there. Somebody, your son wants to go somewhere with his, uh, son, uh, with his friends to remain in a party and come late to stay. And your daughter wants to stay somewhere there in our friend's place and come the next day morning. How do you see uh, when you don't want it, when another person wants it? This is the way we start from our own families. How do we uh, make with it? Again, another situation of Alela Katita Yamang Inter. This is another way we see uh, something where we are forced to do something which we don't want. Uh, it could happen in case of purchase of an insurance policy or just go to a uh, dealer, car dealer, buy a car, where you'll find uh, it could relate to anything or a mere article of consumption. Uh, you and I would have gone to different dealers. I would have secured to myself nothing except the car and the price. You probably thought an insurance, first year's premium, if the dealer would have offered to pay, he would have given you some uh, new gadgetry inside for you to install. All those things would happen because you knew what to get from the other side. Somebody who is taking your money, you are demanding something. How do you make the demand? How would you ensure or identify in every situation there is always something. Whenever you're giving something, you are entitled to take something from the other. That is the way we look at things. And that is what uh, makes uh, uh, possible in negotiation persons who are trained in negotiation understand that there is always something which you can take from the other. You can always give something. You must be prepared to give something from somewhere. Uh, it could happen in so many other situations as well. Mere social functions. You arrive there in Povanam and I thought I shouldn't go, but then he called. I said, yes, I don't want to go there. Or uh, somebody wants you to, can you come and sing somewhere? Can you come and make a speech somewhere? You say, yes, you're, you don't feel like doing. How do you say no? Uh, how do you make it happen? So these are all things which we encountered every life. 
in everyday life. And these are exactly situations where you'll transport and then see how it can be done in your own office. So uh, have a look at this. Uh, what are all the situations where you can uh, do something for negotiation in your, on your client's behalf? Uh, various situations where the judge has asked you already, uh, you want to optimize the maximum uh, benefit for your client. And when the court says, uh, you go settle between uh, yourselves, I don't think this is a case which must go. Remembering my own days as a lawyer, uh, I would probably have, I would have assigned a particular con conduct, a type of person to the other side. Oh, that uh, lawyer will never be prepared to uh, settle. He'll always uh, say something against us. Oh no, this is uh, that party is cantankerous. Oh, I understand everything, but he doesn't. So uh, we have some kind of uh, yeah, mental makeup of how I'm prepared. I'm prepared to go and argue. Look at that. The judge is simply saying now, settle. he doesn't want to do the case and therefore he wants us to say. Take every opportunity that comes when uh, a suggestion comes from the court that we must settle. We are truly negotiating for rights of our parties with the other side. We are now going to another room, which is not a court, where you are going to carry your conversations in ways which are different. It's not the same way as you are going to be making an argument in court. So every situation when there is a um, suggestion for settlement, just don't give up. That's truly your time when you need to hone your skill and then see how you work on your uh, negotiation. Uh, where another situation where the legal position is fluid and talks can proceed on parties' perception of fairness. Uh, there is a, an important author. I was uh, uh, reading his book. He was a FBI a person. He was. Uh, the person who is trained in hostage negotiation. How do we get uh, situations uh, where somebody is taken, uh, kidnapped, and then a huge demand, a ransom is asked. His uh, duty will be when they call up police, the FBI would give to him. Or it could be on a larger scale, uh, such as when a plane is hijacked, a person has a demand, uh, or a few persons have a demand. What do we negotiate? In fact, a greater thing, like uh, even, the 9-11 incident in US, there was uh, the Harvard professor, Yuri, who suggested uh, we should probably negotiate, we should probably discuss. The question was, uh, do you negotiate with persons who are uh, serious threat to humanity? Uh, what can we not negotiate is the, question, is the way you would look at things. So therefore, uh, uh, in all negotiations, uh, our uh, the, the FBI person, uh, the name of whom I'm not able to recall immediately, he would say something like, uh, is was, his, his name is V-O-S-S, -S, um, surname. He would, um, he would say, Chris was is his name. Uh, you'd say that, uh, you say, how is it fair? Are you being fair? You put that question kind of, you evoke that uh, fairness uh, quotient, you'll find suddenly, Nobody wants to be seen as being unfair. So therefore, you'll probably have some new suggestions coming. You'll find the new concessions coming. So uh, secure that sense of fairness. Uh, sometime recently, when I was talking to uh, other friends uh, in a forum like this, I was uh, talking about how we need some role reversals. We expect uh, only judges to deliver justice. I will say anything because my client wants me to say that. I will put my client's position there before the court, let him take a decision. Let him say what is fair. Um, this is one, uh, so therefore, a situation where you think you will say anything as a lawyer, only a judge may, na, needs to be fair. Or for uh, look at how the judges many times are. Uh, they are not fully prepared. They come there only just to listen to you. Uh, or even in that, they don't have time. There are too many cases and they have in their mind their own priority. And your case is not one of those priority items then you think oh, this person is not prepared, what do we do? An ideal situation must be a judge must come fully prepared. It is not uh, days like in MC Chagla's time when he writes in whole, uh, uh, Roses in December that uh, you'll just arrive in court without any preparation because you wouldn't want to prejudge himself. You wouldn't want to be in any way influenced in his thinking. And it used to be also said of another British judge during those times, he will not read the morning newspaper because he wouldn't want to condition his mind in any sense. 
for he would come to the court or there could be some issue relating to a public matter where a newspaper would have given some kind of a perception that ought not to influence his thinking is what he would say not any more a kind of preparation is necessary and therefore um, it is essential uh, that uh, uh, you you be fair in what you're saying uh, that is the fairness of what is important where in your talk whenever a court says now uh, look at the other side and then find out what you can do check up with your client uh, what is it that he wants you can assure the client we are not going to use it in court ultimately if you must go back to court uh, is there something which you could give or what he is demanding is there something which is not anywhere stated so far where you think you'll be able to uh, unravel and then give out to the other diverse to other which may be acceptable to the other person because we know students of law will know uh, that there is uh, even in the evidence act anything which is said in pers pursuant to a compromise talk or what could end in compromise i think section 23 where you are completely uh, safeguarded it can never be put, put in court in evidence so there is always a protection even without reference to what is contained there for confidentiality in arbitration act or in the conciliation or the mediation rules uh, even in normal litigation situation where any talk is made for the purpose of some compromise it's always without prejudice to what is going to be contained it could either be stated so expressly through any of our communications or it is always understood and that is how the section itself the evidence act itself puts it in. and then could be again situations where a case is getting adjourned again and again things are not taking shape then we, we should probably be thinking uh, is it fine that we can talk rather it's happening like this uh, friend uh, do we talk about this now it's not all concluding uh, shall we do something it's never a weakness it's uh, probably some time back when you open a talk for negotiation, when you say that you're willing to settle, when you want to look at what we can do otherwise than argue in court, uh, it's never out of weakness that you argue. It is uh, Gandhi's expression, a person who talks peace is the most powerful person. If he is already weak and uh, so let's not fight, then there is nothing. Only a strong man saying that he will not fight means uh, gives a value to peace itself, isn't it? It's the same way. If you have a strong case and when you're still talking about a compromise, when you're still talking about negotiation, when you're still talking about getting to know what the other side wants to say, that's a great uh, thing. That itself can kind of rattle the other side. Look at him. Uh, look at her, the way she's prepared to um, sit down to talk about this. She doesn't seem to mind that, that uh, she has a very strong case, but all the same, she wants to talk. Uh, talk. So therefore, that way, uh, speaking from a position of strength and then getting down to talks when the court doesn't find time is a good way of opening. And uh, again, stated uh, at all times where there is a continuance of relationship, which is a sort of such as uh, partnership uh, things or a supplier, uh, buyer, where you want uh, continuous uh, things, where you made a demand for damages for things which were supplied, which did not... Uh, match your requirements or it failed therefore there was a, a breach of uh, merchantability uh, issue under the sale of goods act in all cases where you are claiming damages uh, this is uh, in a situation where there had been long time good understanding between parties you should be possible it should be possible for you uh, to think of continuing the relationship which can mutually benefit both in which case you can still think negotiation is the best way to go. Uh, the last one I say with some amount of um, trepidation, uh, the truth is that uh, several times do we not as lawyers uh, uh, worry, uh, how will I make the judge understand? Uh, this is probably an issue which keeps coming to us uh, several times. So therefore, uh, even situations where you think the quality of justice could be in some way affected by inability of a person to understand properly, or on account of certain other factors where you believe that justice will not be done. In all such situations where you are prepared to give yourself to that better sense of justice, where you'll be prepared to talk to the other side with uh, some sense of justice, I think uh, that is the time when you should be seeing it's good time for you to be negotiating. So I just picked up five uh, situations. I'm sure you can think of more situations where it will be worthwhile for you to be talking about uh, negotiation. Uh, there is uh, 
Uh, what is your USP, as they say, uh, your unique selling point, your selling point of view in court? Uh, I was telling you because this is a, when uh, negotiation classes take place. Uh, in uh, I had an occasion to go to a good university to see what happens in negotiation in Harvard. Uh, Nobody talks about what happens in courts at that time. We are only taught about the various techniques of negotiation. But then, um, having been a lawyer and uh, having been uh, having served the, in the bench for some time, I am interested in uh, seeing how much of negotiation principles apply in court. Uh, we normally understand negotiation as uh, that which affects, which is uh, carried out between parties. Uh, you never say that you negotiate with the judge. That could be even uh, misunderstood. But then uh, I'm trying to make this point very clear. When I'm talking about negotiation, I'm uh, saying um, how the lawyers act as salespersons. Do you not see at all times uh, what does a salesman do? Uh, he has a product he has to sell. And you will say everything which is nice about the product in order he sells the product. You will probably offer something else as free and then make something, uh, make him, uh, make you buy this. Same way in court, we do a salesperson's job, don't we? Uh, we want to convince uh, our point of view to a judge. Uh, imagine uh, that uh, we have a court, when we arrive in court, these are the things in your court uh, negotiation must start. I already said, never go um, without knowing what the other side is, who the other side is. I said, you try and see what is there, what is posted in the social media, even that much is fine. The same thing. Uh, of what you would say, never begin an argument without knowing uh, what the other side could be saying, or uh, you size up uh, the capabilities of the other person. If it is merely a garment, you are going to be seeing it. It's not as if you are arriving in a court each day meeting somebody else, every day a new person. It may not be like that. If you are up against a garment, you know who your uh, garment pleader is going to be, who is representing uh, the department. You know the same lawyer is appearing, what kind of preparation it is. Uh, previously, what you would probably do is uh, to go there, take your file and then go sit in your place and then be ready. The maximum that you can do is to look to the other side and say, how much time do you, will you take? Or probably the government counsel will ask you how much time will take. We never get beyond how much time we take. Uh, probably days are different. You should uh, also now Post-COVID, you should adopt new, uh, new approaches. Uh, you must make an assessment of what the other side would have prepared. Um, That's fine. Uh, I've, I've known uh, during the, my own time of practice uh, um, under my father, um, you would have had a, a long list of cases. You would prepare everything. They're all bundled up nicely. You have your uh, advocate, your clerk who picks up and then takes it. Uh, and then keeps it there. You sit glum in the court till your case is called. The other side uh, doesn't talk. We never share what what you prepared and what you have given. Is that a weakness for you to be um, not sharing what you have in your mind? It's probably fair these days to even think uh, uh, to look at the other uh, counsel friend. What is this now? There is a, the case seems to be completely covered. Do you have some point for it there? No, no, it is not covered, brother. Supposing you say something like that. Then I say, now, uh, let's see now. Do we want to talk about it? Make a kind of rehearsal before you put the point before the court. There is nothing wrong in talking to the other lawyer. Uh, we are not used to it. That is uh, honest. Let us be honest. I have not uh, done that kind of practice. Now, over the time from the time of let down practice, I, I have asked it several times. I would feel like asking at least initially. And later used to do. Uh, have you said this to the other side? Uh, are you prepared on that side? Do you know what's happening? This is the point which he's making. Uh, have you understood that? Uh, is that something which we'll see? So therefore, um, what is the view on any point of law or any position on a fact of how we understand? It's fine that it is put through the other side before you present it in court. We have not done that, I know. But I'm saying these are times we should now start a new kind of a practice. Shortly uh, later, you'll find courts will adopt technology in ways you had never imagined. That is what we are poised now. Uh, suddenly, if the Supreme Court is now saying, or Madras High Court says now, the whole of this month, there will be no vacation. There will be only online cases. And the cases will be virtual uh, sessions will happen. What are we going to be doing? Merely one person sitting in one place, you're not going to be seeing a lawyer on the other uh, side to ask a thing like that. 
probably these are occasions when we can even call up the other side and say, uh, now this is the case which is coming today. This is the point which I want to say. You have some answers for that. Do you have something? Do we discuss about it? Make some discussion now. It's fine. That is a way to go to uh, kind of understand what the other side is going to be saying to prepare yourself to say what the court has to accept or not. We have already to say, now we had a talk just before uh, we uh, joined my lord. Uh, this is what I think. I think this is an area where we will be able to accept. This may not be an area where we accept and therefore we put to you for adjudication. That kind of a um, strategy will work. Uh, I'm not saying this is something taught somewhere. I'm saying this is a situation which I identify now as something which can work. And this is again another situation where uh, a judge is uh, holding some point uh, against you. Uh, have you noticed? Um, I can. I, I wish I can take. The, I, I hope I. Uh, the, I won't commit any serious impropriety if I take the name. Uh, uh, our Attorney General uh, K K Venugopal. Uh, I've not known him too well. He doesn't know me even. But I've, uh, the one thing which I have seen and remember. Uh, or what I had seen probably sometime uh, when I was still in college and when I was coming to the court to see how proceedings were. This was sometime in 1975. Many of you may not have been born at that time. And uh, he had a manner of uh, saying when a judge would ask a question, you simply stop everything else. Uh, you'll just, with rapt attention, you look at the judge. And you'll, the man, when he begins, he'll never say no. He will say, yes, that is one way of looking at it. But that but or however we mean everything. So therefore, we don't disagree when there is a matter. But the selling point of view in court must be not to disagree immediately. If you are in doubt and the judge is putting with something, don't be brash and say, now, no, this is the point of view. If there is something which is coming from the court, take a, say, no, I, I am not really, to accept ignorance there is not a problem. I have not really looked at it the way your lordship is saying. Uh, shall I take time and look at it? No, no, no. You don't need to look at it. This is what is the law. Then you can say with all humility, I have not understood it the way your lordship is putting. Now, please allow me that benefit. Uh, you'll take it an hour later. Take it in the afternoon. Take it tomorrow. So like that, wherever you find that the court is against you, uh, don't press your point of view too harsh. Uh, try and see how we can gear the person to your side slowly. It can happen by the other person not understanding the point of view correctly, the point of law correctly. There is some point of law which the person is not really seeing or what you don't have immediately to put it across and therefore take that time. That's essential. Um, again, when you are preparing, this is all some uh, strategies you'll know for sure uh, of those lawyers who are here who have been uh, any number of years for 10 years plus, they must know. Uh, always uh, try and see when you're before a judge, uh, try and see whether on the same point of what you're going to be arguing, has there been any viewpoint expressed by the same judge? Run through a quick search. Basically, it was all not possible. You have your office junior or you're a junior uh, yourself. Run through a quick search through uh, and find out through a soft, uh, software or what you may have, whether there is on that point of uh, law, by that judge, is there anything? Again, you have favorites among judges. One judge who will always look to some point of view of another judge whose views he, he likes at all times. You can see, look at that, and then try and see whether you have something which you can use for your benefit. So uh, in your court, uh, the way negotiation, it is not in a conventional negotiation sense I'm saying, but how to win your point, how to make this point register with the other side is what I thought I should share with you. And these are some of the points which uh, I thought uh, sharpening your skills is what I wanted to point out by that. Um, ah, how to say no? Uh, this is probably, I have a couple of uh, more slides before I conclude. Um, this is uh, how to say no is a big deal, truly a big deal. It's not very easy at all from normal situation in life to say, I'm not taking you there. I can't get to you this. I can't let you go there. This no uh, is always perceived as uh, this is negative. Apart from the Either way, by husband to wife or wife to your husband, you already know uh, when you say no, uh, what kind of uh, anxiety you create for the other person. The same way could happen in a negotiating table with the other side to say no is always a problem. And therefore, you have uh, seasoned negotiators who give you important tips. And this is from uh, 
Harvard School of Negotiation, they have a, a program and nego negotiation. It's PON, it's called P-O-N. Program and negotiation is run through uh, a person called Menukin, uh, a man of brilliance, utter brilliance. He has written uh, several books. Uh, one of them is uh, to bargain with the devil. And there is another person, Deepak Malhotra, is an, an Indian who is uh, in Harvard School of Business Administration. He's uh, probably the authority on negotiation who, whose books and whose speeches uh, are available there in the net for you to see. Uh, and then he has also something to say uh, this. Uh, you, whenever there is uh, something which a person puts it to you, don't say no immediately. Uh, get that no between two yeses. Uh, one yes must be there. Uh, that yes could be with a condition. No, you can state your position. Three, you bring it, uh, conclude it with a yes. I'll just give you some illustration of how it could be. Uh, probably in a child custody case, let's uh, take it. If we are not talking about for uh, tax bar to be, say, revenue bar to be immediately say, talking about child custody, but the example suggests itself uh, nicely to me and therefore I said that. Supposing there is uh, a husband and wife fighting for custody of a child where the marriage is in the rocks. And uh, the husband says, the wife is having custody of the child. The husband says, now I need the custody. I have the means. You don't have the means. So I need the custody. The mother for the child who is, uh, who is just about five years old doesn't want to lose the custody, obviously. So she says, no. If she doesn't say, no, I can't give the custody. Then you're uh, advising that uh, client or when you are uh, the party yourself, you say, no, don't say no first. Yes, I understand why you're saying you are love for uh, the child. I understand. No, I just, I don't think I can give up uh, custody. Probably then I've said first, yes, I understand his position. No, I can't do it. I have a clear answer. No, now this, I don't say first, then I bring it there. Then I need to conclude it with the yes. How would I say, yes, we'll probably think of something else. You're asking for custody. Do you ask for visitation sometimes? So therefore you, you scale down the demand of what the other person is making, help the person understand that even if what that person makes cannot be accepted, there is some other position which that person may like to come down to. That is how you bring your uh, no, uh, how it can uh, come, it can come between two yeses. And then again, uh, when you say, when you don't want to say no, uh, there are several methods by doing that. Probably you experienced it in life. Somebody is now putting it to something. Uh, you Somebody is asking for loan uh, and you don't want to give. There is always a way of saying, Don't, isn't it? Uh, I'll check up. Uh, I'll, uh, I should also ask my family, uh, friend. I think I should check up with my wife. I should check, uh, check up with my father. I'll check up with somebody. Or somebody, when you are talking about uh, an organizational level, then always put that final decision making as residing elsewhere. I need to check up with that person and come back to you. So therefore, instead of saying no, you can gain some time by putting that authority to decide to say no as resting in the hands of someone else. So therefore, that is one method of saying no is to put it to, to come to the table through someone else of who occupies a higher authority. Or if the highest authority is the person who is your client who is sitting there, the other side is making a demand. Let's talk about some uh, uh, management labor issue. Then you will immediately say probably, we need to put it through the board. There is a company issue. I won't be able to take a decision. I think of what is coming through. I think somebody else will still do. So therefore, uh, these are the ways we try and say no. And then among other things, uh, even putting no, uh, there can be, uh, we can even understand and uh, we should uh, set down some uh, small, uh, these are all civilities, uh, uh, make a note, uh, small, uh, as the person is saying something, you write in a piece of paper and then push it to the other side. Uh, I don't think we can go through this. Shall we, shall we look at it later or shall we see later? Uh, kind of messages which are sent uh, from one to another, sending a note somewhere, instead of uh, merely putting it out in so many words. So where you don't want to blurt out some denial, uh, it can come softly through a note which is prepared and sent to the other side. So uh, this is uh, a, a communication of a dissent through a note also is a polished way of looking at things. Uh, I'm sure uh, that is possible for you to uh, see that it can work that way. Uh, th this, uh, the, the same way as you say no, ultimately there is not a way of 
concluding things you uh, you'll know that uh, yeah, when whenever we talk about uh, uh, a deal it gets completed it gets concluded only when it when you say yes and then uh, one uh, technique there also is when when something is getting concluded yes uh, don't say yes right from the beginning uh, it is in, in in tamil we have a way of saying enada bigu panikira mari irukku it's not like that it's not bigu panikira vishayam but uh, the yes does not come immediately on the table and then you go unless we have already discussed quite a, a few uh, few times we have exchanged communications where we are arriving there only to express our final opinions then it can probably be yes but in a typical negotiation uh, always uh, delay saying yes because you probably have a better deal you have a better bargain to make so therefore don't give in too uh, early and later uh, criticize yourself oh i should have accepted this it is like how you purchase something in the market merely by impulse you have said that person offered to you you simply picked it up as you walk to the car or as you arrive in some place you keep thinking about it oh did i say um, yes did, should i pay this price it's like that Uh, that first impulse of what drives you to accept something you should still wait for some time you should see measured questions uh, you should uh, uh, find out you should ask more um, when before you say yes uh, ask some questions uh, what type of questions it can be uh, what uh, what do you think uh, how do you think this is correct uh, what do you think is fair uh, why do you ask this so why are you prepared to um, why are you prepared to say this so therefore this what how why these kind of engaging in some questions and then eliciting some answers from the person gives you some time uh, to take a measured approach to the ultimate decision which concludes with the yes don't give the yes too is easily take some time um, and before you see uh, before you say yes um, you make always certain that you have made the other person commit to doing something for you like i said in all transactions we are talking about we all as students of law understand consideration is the most important thing nothing which is gratuitous there is always something which is happening from the other side there is a mutual detriment which works for any transaction or there is some whatever benefit there must be a corresponding detriment from the other side and vice versa so uh, try and see uh before you commit to saying something what else is more what more can you give that amount of time you always have that's why i said don't say yes immediately uh, engage in some conversations and questions uh, can you do something more can you do this uh, will we be able to do this or you ask me to pay this money now can i have some time uh, so bargain for something and secure from the other side what what is good for you to get and uh our chris was uh, says the fbi uh, negotiation expert says this uh, when uh, you get the other side to say all right you are right it's mostly cynical uh, you are right is a manner of saying now i want to close all these things i can't engage in a talk with you all right man you know uh, you know everything you you are correct it works sometimes like that uh, that is not the way any any talk can conclude when when you make the other person say you are correct Uh, then it's a manner of uh, surrendering something and you are not interested in negotiation you don't want to have a fair deal or you think that the person is not worthwhile talking to and therefore you can't do all right we don't have anything else let us see elsewhere but if the conversation comes to an end is that's correct then it's an objective way of looking at it ultimately that in anything is you're not correct i'm not correct that's correct is mutually correct that's how it is we have met a position which is correct for both of us so therefore uh, always uh, try and see your response must be that's correct is the way you ultimately do that when you have done that probably you have a great deal and that is the way it should go so therefore uh, uh, this is uh, uh, as we see this uh, the the most important thing getting to say yes ha huh. and bargaining with the devil i uh, thought is an important way because there are always some persons who can't conclude whose presence can be a problem um, you understand this uh, the problem uh, this is how i said uh, ask what how why when when you ask what the problem is uh, what what is the problem is a way of saying now you are prepared to listen to the other side what's your problem you have to ask is 
a manner of uh, engagement that you want to hear the other side. And then you ask why, then you know the reason for the behavior. Why is the person as tough as he gives it out to be? Why is his exterior at all times so harsh? Why is he such a stone? Uh, why I'm not able to get anywhere near? You ask why, you probably know the reason. And uh, ask how, you'll probably find uh, the way to resolve. These are this uh, what, why, how. In every situation, you must post that and then try and secure what is best and why it's happening like that. And when you ask how, then probably you're literally arriving at finding a way of getting a solution. And then uh, when, whenever you're talking to a person who is not going to give in so easily and he has a, a tough uh, approach to things, it can't be as tough as what I explained to you previously, where a person arrives so saying, I have 14 litigations in Supreme Court, all the cases must be ended in favor. This is all the brief which I have from my company. It doesn't work like that. But you must at all times understand what is the best alternative to that negotiated settlement, negotiated agreement, what they call as partner. These are probably expressions which I've heard any number of times, uh, but at least uh, without even minding this, this is only to remember uh, the better alternative. If it is not this now, if I'm now talking, you are not able to accept what I'm saying. What is the next alternative? I go back to court and that court uh, uh, litigation, that litigation to an appeal, appeal to uh, uh, the variations, the cost which is in, in, uh, included there, all this can go. So uh, put it through the other side. Now, what are we looking at that? Because it's just not your own thing. This is what I expect. What do you expect? So try to secure what is your uh, alternative way of looking at it. So therefore, raise that question to the person who is at all times very difficult to deal with. It will work. You will never know. And that's a manner of securing the best that will happen. And uh, difficult people should shout. If somebody wants to shout, let him shout. Sit back. And it is your own sense of uh, calm which can rattle a person. So therefore, uh, allow a person to rant and shout. Don't worry. Don't take anything as personal. It's never against you. It's against your client. It's never against your client. It is against a cause which the person represents. All that will wear out. Wear out. So therefore, uh, that's one way. And ever conclude, if somebody is taking too tough a situation, uh, try and see by postponing it, do you make, uh, do you secure anything better? It's worthwhile. Uh, I, I'll be the last person to be talking about adjournment for a situation. But even then, when you are into some talk, always uh, take some time, take a heal. The person is not prepared to look at it now, probably uh, sleep over will secure a better understanding for the person. Or when you have told the other person what is the better alternative which operates of the person, you set the person thinking. So therefore, uh, then don't conclude in a state of uh, desperation. All right, now I don't think I can talk uh, anymore. Uh, I'll just give up. Let me go through. Don't say like that. Nothing is your talarit. You can at all times modify it. You can wait for some time and then conclude it at some point of time. Now, it's fine now, to come back after some time. It has happened even in Ramayana times. Now, of uh, is another way of saying you don't try to win an opponent when a person is tired. It just doesn't work. You let the person go. Let's see now. Let's come back, refresh, and then see whether we can see something better. And then if we want to walk away, uh, walk away with dignity. Just don't rush out. Now, what you see in movies, what doesn't happen, what doesn't work in our lives. Uh, we must know that there is a better way of looking at it is uh, you prepare the other side. Um, friend, if you say like this, we may not be able to continue. Um, I, may, I may have to conclude now. Is that, uh, is that how you see? And it doesn't work again like that. Then the, you must only, even if some person says, no, you can go, if this is not acceptable, you should try and see um, what else is possible in that situation. Don't uh, take anything very quickly. I, I've known a person um, who's uh, an ace uh, mediator uh, practicing in California. Why am I taking names from outside the country? It is only because uh, some of them, uh, we are still in a country which has known mediation for a long time. We have uh, been introduced in this 200 years uh, to a litigative process and we are enamored by that. That is the only thing we, we, we are now using. We need to adopt techniques of what we are always good at. And uh, therefore, I've known a, a person, Bruce. Uh, Bruce has a manner of saying, 
important expression, friends, is decelerate. Don't conclude decelerate is go slow, slow. Whenever you think I already, already told you, don't say yes immediately. Take the time. What more can you get is what I said. The same way, um, if it doesn't work, just try and see whether it can go slow on that. If even that doesn't work, if there is a case for a mediation or arbitration, look at that. Uh, they're all uh, not typically alternatives to a court system. The way we have mediation, which is court and next mediation, which is the ma major work of what we are introduced to, uh, it comes within the ken of the court's purview at all times. The court has a manner of looking at it and help the parties refine what they've concluded. Or if it's an arbitration, it is again a process which is akin to court and ultimately the, the way we understand our arbitration uh, of taking it to court at the, the drop of a hat, probably it shouldn't work. But then at least we feel assured that if there is anything seriously amiss, it's possible for you to approach the court again. So therefore, to that extent, I think I would suggest when you conclude things, don't immediately take an option of going to court again. Uh, you should uh, you should be in a position to suggest mediation and arbitration and um, uh, sounding like a, pro a professional a true pro is uh, when at all times explain uh, when you begin and explain the way you see uh, when a point is uh, to be argued you say now this is the way you want to go this is uh, this is how i see so therefore begin at all times i said making a beginning taking a control is important uh, the way you see the problem you confront, how you expect the conversation to continue, kind of uh, explain that to the other side. It's fine. And exploring is like what I said, finding out the expectation of the other side, her bargaining point, how, offer, how you can make an offer which can truly make an impact. And then uh, when we propose something, use expressions which you have never used to hitherto. Probably you say, this is my client's point of view. Uh, we always say something like we, wherever you say I, uh, we make it we. Today I saw um, illness where I is there, you make it we, we it becomes wellness. So therefore the same way is what I would say, even in a proposal when we are making, uh, shall we do this? So shall, don't say shall I do this? Shall I give you something? Shall we look at this figure? So therefore make the other person in all the conversations as a part of your decision making. That's important. And then when it is uh, about bargaining, Chris Vaz again would say, uh, when you're haggling for figures, and most of the cases you will find ultimately, except in some issues, everything has something to do ultimately with money. It is the chips, it is uh, the coins, jingle, which make the difference. There you'll find, uh, get some, if when we are locked up with some figure, don't uh, say the figure of what you're going to be ultimately prepared in your mind to say that. It's from a very ordinary daily uh, trick of what we know. You don't settle in a shop uh, at the price of what you want to give. Always put a lower price and then go sleep, uh, slowly come up. Then even when some calculated, uh, when you think some money has to come, you don't give a round figure at all times. Uh, say something, make it seem like you keep a pad, you work something, you say something like, uh, think about uh, 30 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 44,000. 44, would it work? So you make it seem like you have made some work. It's not deception. This is what works, they say. The experts say that uh, don't give a round figure even at the beginning. Try and see. You know, make it seem like you have worked it. And make some work at the time when you are proposing a figure. It should have some basis. So that way. And uh, when we are concluding on things, when it is working like that, uh, always say, I'm happy with what is happening. Uh, I think it's great. Let's agree. So uh, 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 manner of putting it there in ways which everyone would understand is fine. That is the way you shake your hand. Uh, that is uh, taking it sounding like pro is a manner of saying uh, how is the way it should go. Now, the checkpoints and then I conclude and then I'll take uh, whatever questions that we have you know, of something of how you say that negotiation should go. Uh, uh, to checkpoints is face, the, the focus is there on the person with whom you're the, the, the negotiating and the acknowledgement is whatever the person says whenever an offer comes or what you're not accepting you acknowledge you have understood what the other person is saying that's very, very correct and don't be angry with the person if you are not if you don't understand something or what the person says doesn't seem fair you seek for clarification why are you saying like this how is it think how do you think it will work uh, what, 
what have we come to to say this that how where when all these questions when it go it's a manner of uh, clarifying and empathize is like what i said in a custody case i uh, i see uh, you have a uh, reason you are expecting your love for the child i understand is what i begin with saying yes and therefore that is empathy or if, when i say ultimately i can't give the child and then i say now let us talk about something else when i said another <laughs> yes i was seeing how we can collaborate to secure something so whenever you reject something or accept you acknowledge and ensure that you have made the other person feel that you understand what the person is saying i just now said about what bruce would say as decelerate take a heave and this is temptation to close it's always oh, it's all over now don't say like that let's see now if everything is coming to a close just take some time you get out from your place take a, a glass of water come back or is there, let's discuss now yeah everything is fine uh, uh, let's just have tea have coffee or tea circulating before you conclude so you have your talk let's finish it now manas mari idu podu maatilla udane ezhidilla udane ezhidilla they have other problems uh, see at all times when a when a matter is concluded now how will it be ultimately executed Uh, how will it be accepted and ensured that you won't require to go back to court that is better discussed at the time uh, itself and then you say uh, you are now saying you'll pay me 20 lakhs my pay my client 20 lakhs for this uh, how do you think you are going to uh, arrange for funds it is uh, to be asked in such a sensitive way you don't doubt the person's ability the person could be very rich and to be saying why well, you have to give 20 lakhs you are saying now it will take a weeks time uh, how do we ensure our finances are now coming through uh, how will it happen please uh, can you share that information with us that's a way to do if there is going to be a default at, at all times you must know how are we going to put it over? sir it's all happening we have understood some um, time limit timeline uh, so it doesn't work what could happen have at least in your mind if this does not go through what else is the alternative in case of default what should happen that's uh, important and when you're signing something there ultimately in the document ensure that the person has full authority to bind that is essential so this uh, these are probably the things just this names for you bargaining the devil by robert menukin never split this was influence the psychology of persuasion robert sialdini a program of uh, program of negotiation program and by harvard law school these are some of the uh, things uh, these are the resources for me and therefore i thought i'll share it with you so these friends are uh, my thoughts i've taken probably an hour or more uh, i uh, wanted it to close in 45 minutes but then i probably went a little more mm, so i'll be too happy to see uh, what you have in mind uh, what we can uh, do uh, uh, is there anything uh, that you ask me i'll be happy to share with you uh, we'll come back uh, to a mode or what do you say um, the questions uh, prithvi question on session don't sir, close me. yes sir spouses yeah sure vedant and sunasan used to circulate the citations first to other side sure sure so uh, that's a uh, that's a confidence uh, that somebody is prepared to circulate uh, the position of what he has i'm saying now this is the way to go in future Uh, and now that's what you say vedant sinhasan did vedant sinhasan died probably about 10 years back and what he said and fairness uh, yeah that is so sure uh, so so sir, before we take on the question and answer sir i would request all the participants uh, i'm going to unmute all i think uh, we should give a round of applause to our speaker before we take up the question and answer for for giving us such an enlightening session today so uh, so participants so, participants want to give a round of applause round of applause for each of our sorry sorry routine thank you very much sir uh so we will take up a uh, few questions so there are already few questions in line uh so with your permission sir can we start the, with the yeah, first please. question please go ahead thank you very much sir uh so first question is from uh, mr puneet i'll just unmute him uh puneet 
Puneet, are you able to hear me? Okay, I think uh, we lost him, but then I can read out his question to you, sir, if you please. permit me. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. So, so he is asking. Uh, he's asking, as uh, uh, I believe he's a fresher to the bar. As freshers to the bar, what do we do to get the bench to take us more seriously? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Puneet, uh, this is a problem which everyone encounters, Puneet. Don't worry. You don't get to be noticed. I'll tell you something. Uh, my father had been a lawyer and I was a lawyer too. Um, our rooms will be in such a place, uh, uh, such a position that anyone has to go through my room to, to his, uh, his room. We are sitting in opposite, uh, in next next rooms. Many clients, as they come in, they'll say, you? Then I'll tell them, uh, please tell me what it is. You'll say, no, no, no okay, I'll wait here for some time and then see the senior. So therefore, it would happen, uh, just not in court, I'm talking about the house. Even in the chamber, a client will not be prepared to share his uh, case with you. So therefore, uh, you what you do, therefore, when the client goes inside, you also go with him. And then ensure that you have read the papers at least in some way. So uh, my father will look to me and ask me questions. The next time you will know, oh, even the senior is asking this man, therefore let me tell him something. The same way in court, I've noticed that if you prepare yourself, See that again in Roses in December of MC Chagla. He says about uh, um, the all well known uh, Nani Palkiwala at a time when probably he was 28 years. And uh, Chagla writes in his book, I used to think, he's talking about 19, uh, see, 1950s or something. Uh, he, he said, there was a man who would at all times be sitting in the Library, when he comes to a court, he'll have a book in his hand, you'll see something. In your court, if you're assisting your senior and you're all prepared and the senior looks to you for so many things, then the judge knows. So the next time you'll say, no, you don't need to um, get your senior, you argue with him. You will say like that. So your sense of preparation, uh, your assured assistance of what you give to your senior at the court. And then on those rare occasions, when, when your senior has only asked you to take an adjournment, just don't go and take an adjournment. You say like this, this is the case relating to this. These are the points which are involved there. My senior is not ready today. Give some kind of background to a case. Make your voice be heard by a judge that you are there just not to be taking time that you are there to say, even if those few words, you know what the case is. Or even if you are not fully prepared and you have been asked to take an adjournment to senior, given the paper, you prepare yourself to say, don't make a, an ass of yourself by pay, making a wrong presentation. Say, I'm not fully prepared. The case came to me from a senior only now. I would like to see, this is the case about, and this I'm sure at the next date of hearing, I'll be able to present the case. Any judge will be too happy to see a young lawyer saying, this you'll prepare and argue, he says. He says he has already known something and he's saying what it is. So therefore, uh, bide by your time, uh, Puneet, you'll, you'll, you'll get noticed soon. Your own sense of preparation and how you are able to respond will make all the difference in court. Thank you very much, sir. I, I think that question is always there in a junior's, uh, in a junior advocate's mind. So, I mean, it again gives us the confidence on how to deal with such situations also. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, next question from uh, Satish, sir. sir. I just... Satish, uh, sir? Yeah, can you hear? Yes, yes Satish. Sir. Yes, uh, it was a very illuminating session with you. We really had the benefit of some facet of uh, litigation, or part of litigation, which we really don't know much. Uh, my question, uh, Kananji, is government being the lar largest litigant, I think uh, the negotiations and the conciliation will work for the government? Yeah. This is a point to which uh, we have encountered at various places. I'm sure every court must have done that when I'm making some, uh, taking examples from uh, Punjab and Haryana, it is because of my association in the last few years uh, before I uh, superannuated and came away. Uh, Justice Suri Kant, who is now the judge of the Supreme Court, um, believed in uh, negotiation. I'm not really talking about uh, mediation in any sense. 